healthcare remains a collective concern for everyone around the world. Here with me talking about the standard of care and how to improve it for all people and all nations is Lisa Arfa, the new president and CEO of Physicians for Peace. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about the use of, of technology yes. to innovate. Now, you have been on a listening tour, yes. talking to experts in uh, global health right. and technology. Right. What has been the thing that has stood out the most to you? So this listening tour, first of all, what has stood out most in general is just the openness everyone has to collaborate, the, the desire for all of us to really make a difference in the world. Okay. In terms of technology, there's so many outside the box thinkers out there. And what is coming across is the world wants to connect. People want to be connected to one another, whether it's through books that they're receiving on e-readers, whether it's through with a WhatsApp and, and have, being able to talk and communicate to one another. Mm -hmm. But really, the world wants to connect. People mm -hmm. are interested in learning about each other and about helping each other. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's profound, and I think really? um, this 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 organization is very unifying because very much you know so. when you bring when you bring an increased quality of life or standard of living right. to people they're certainly more receptive to hear who you are about and where you come from right so and doing know. that by respecting what their needs are not mm -hmm. imposing ours that's that's and that was one thing i did that stood out to me right. as you were talking that you actually go in first and speak to them and you're welcomed by them you don't we just are invited, push right. yourself on them correct mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. and that, that that makes them more receptive what you what you bring oh absolutely Mm -hmm. So, can you tell me a little bit about you? Ooh. You know, because I can already tell, and I've spent a little time with you, that you're extremely modest, but I'm going to make you talk about you a little bit. This will be the difficult part. Okay, <laughs> so um, my interest in medicine is mm -hmm. has always been there. I am the daughter of a surgeon and a nurse. Um, my father was a um, general surgeon, uh, my mother a nurse turned lawyer. Both of them always... A nurse turned lawyer. Turned lawyer. And, and she... Overachiever. Very much so. <laughs> and she always um, advocated for women and the homeless. And so in my family, and my father always did work in the community pro bono. Mm -hmm. And so in my family, there was always a sense of giving back. That mm -hmm. um, the, the great John F. Kennedy quote, to, to those much has been given, much is um, required. Mm -hmm. So that's how I grew up. And my love for medicine was there. And even though I tried, I did the medical school thing, I did pre-med, I tried to apply to medical school, I would go to the operating room and I would get sick. I would, you know, my dad would have to get a nurse to give me sniffing salt, and so I just figured there's got to be a better way for me to be, make so a difference. Cutting was just not it for was you. It just not my thing. <laughs> and so, in realizing it was not my thing, I realized I could make a difference on a different scale. And for me, that was through the love of politics and policy. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. spent a great deal of my career um, on Capitol Hill in the political world um, and other nonprofits, really trying to figure out how can I make a difference for the people that I'm supposed to be serving. Mm -hmm. I just so happen to be so blessed to have come across this union of the two. Mm -hmm. um, heard about this um, opportunity from a colleague of my husband's who said this really sounds like Lisa, she should apply. Um, I did, I was so happy in my own career, in my own um, organization. I had created a company doing leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just was compelled to apply. And so I did it. And um, thank goodness I'm here. And I've been able to merge these two beautiful worlds and move forward. Well, it, it is clear to me that you are a star. Thank you. Uh, but you have been able to surround yourself with some wonderful people who allow you to fly. Right. Can you tell me about your support staff? Absolutely. So um, that is the truth. Um, we are only as good as our team. And the one great gift I, I have brought to this organization is I do know how to develop a team, a team far brighter, far faster, far more experienced than I am. Mm. So the team that we have now um, was a lot of the team from before, the experts in, in our programs department um, doing great things, um, Innis Boland, Bibiana, um, Gama, and Leslie Toledo. We added to that Erin Thornton, who mm. is really been on the global scene. Um, she uh, had integral part of the one campaign. She helped Christy Turlington start Every Mother Counts. Um, so mm. she has come and mentored this incredible team that was already in place. Um, so for me, for my network of talking to people, I realized you know, I needed to tap into someone who had just a little more experience and a little more connectivity to the, the issue. In terms of our internal shop, our communications and our, our development team, I also turned to my graduate school network again, and I was able to find um, Alan Suma, 
who is now leading our external affairs. And she is a communications expert, and she's a, she's a, a web expert. She <laughs> is it. And mm -hmm. she is leading Luisa Vasquez Lopez, who is also that tremendous and has was here as a, a Norfolk native mm -hmm. and um, not a Norfolk native, lives here now, but she was here as our experienced team. So we were able to really pull from people to develop, to pull other people in the communications world from networks. So that is one gift that I do bring is mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of great, smart people. <laughs> Which means you're a great leader. You know how right. to build a team. I'm building teams. And then Jamie Morgan, who is there still, who um, was our incredible interim CEO, um, he's there really building the teams internally and being the sort of a, um, the guy who's keeping the, the, the the cart running, the train on the tracks, mm -hmm. and allowing me to go out and really learn global health, talk to people, and figure out how to shape the vision that's important to PFP. So now, see, it's clear that you guys, you know how to build that team of the nuts and bolts to do what you do. How right. is it that you're able to recruit right. the physicians and the specialists that are partnered right. with your organization? It's amazing how many people want to affect change in the world. Mm. So the first thing we do is, again, we identify the need of what's been asked of us. And if one of our current IMEs is in that specialty, we will ask him or her to tap into their network of colleagues who also want to, to go abroad and do this. If not, we now are learning to work with medical schools, with other global health centers, working with the medical associations to identify who in that capacity of whatever the country needs, we will how do we identify people who are willing to help? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, people want to help. Mm -hmm. They want to make a difference. They want to take their education and their learning. One of the greatest gifts our IMEs give us is the, the joy they have in teaching mm -hmm. and really sharing the knowledge that they were fortunate enough to receive. Mm -hmm. It's a gift for them to be able to go share it with another. So it's, it's not as hard as you think to find people who want to commit and give and teach the way they were taught. And so that is pretty much the, the what you would say would be their most rewarding thing they bring absolutely. back from serving in these far-flung locations. Yes, absolutely, mm. is the fact that they are able to impart knowledge that otherwise wouldn't be imparted. And it's, it's a gift to see another culture. It's a gift to be a part of it. It's a gift to create these relationships that are created. Mm -hmm. And um, to be able to share what they have learned is really rewarding. Now, just listening to the greatness of what you guys offer, yes. I, I know it. It, it needs some funding. Now, what about yes. your donor base? You know, we have a wonderful donor base here. We started okay. here in the Hampton Roads area. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Horton, uh, again, a incredibly lovely, a talented, experienced man. He started here in Hampton Roads, and our base is terrific here, absolutely okay. beautiful. Uh, we rely on that base. We will continue to. We are grateful to them. We will thank them. What we want to do is now, because we are a part of the global conversation, mm -hmm. we want to expand outside of Norfolk in terms of our money base. So we are looking to bigger cities. We are trying to hit the top cities around this country. Talk to people, again, part of the listening tour is to talk to people who are relevant. What partnerships can we create? Mm -hmm. Again, whether with global health centers, with other hospitals who can send doctors, or with a base of people who really want to financially support PFP, we are continuing to rely on Norfolk, but trying to help them help us by reaching outside. Now, that's the one thing about we talked about, mm -hmm. about innovation and how the yes. world is so much smaller in that way because innovation allows us to connect, uh, you know, deeper than just down the yes. street, but around the world. Yes. So how can our viewers support you or contribute to you and spread the word throughout the world for you? That's, thank you. That's a terrific question. The first thing is, obviously, like any nonprofit, we need financial support. Mm -hmm. Any amount that a person can give, whether they can do something small every month or one large gift. Mm -hmm. um, that is a big, big um, ask we have, and that is our main priority. Mm -hmm. Second to that, or equal to that, but second on my list, is having programs um, identify, again, more of the people who want to volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. So how can they give us their service, their expertise? How can we ask them to go into another country? I'd like to help identify those people as well. People who can give money or people who can give time are our greatest resource at the moment. Well, we don't have very much time. Yes. So I want to make sure that those folks know yes. exactly how to do it. Great. So can you give out website? Yes. Phone so, numbers? Yes, absolutely. So the website is www.physiciansforpeace.org. Mm -hmm. There is a Donate Now button. If someone feels compelled to donate, that would be much appreciated. There's also a way to get in touch with Innis Boland, who is our programs person. And under our staff list, you would see, click on her picture, and you get taken directly to her email address. That will help us identify international medical educators who want to work. Same thing with global health centers. 
um, or medical associations who feel we'd be in great partnership with them. Well, Lisa, I just want to thank you. I am so happy that we get yes. to now call you at Hampton Roads our own. Thank you. And I'm you are a, certainly a great leader, and you're going to be able to lead the charge for all, all organizations who are trying to make this a healthier and safer place to live. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Oh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you spending time with us and welcome your thoughts on this subject or any other issue that involves the people of Hampton Roads. You can share your ideas on our MyTBZ Facebook page or Twitter page using the hashtag OurIssuesHamptonRoads. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, I'm Ray Pearson Finn. Goodbye. For now.